Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about communication security. Communication is one of those critical parts of, uh, of your uh, preparedness efforts that needs, to, that needs to be there. The ability to communicate with your loved ones or your teammates or those people that are important to you is, is very, very, very important. Whether it's done via a cell phone or alternative means, uh, it's important that we also take communication security very seriously. Uh, with the with the with the common uh, the commonality of these types of communication devices, this particular one being a, a Wuxon uh, KG UV 2D, um, it's important that we understand that these things can be easily compromised. They can be listened in on fairly easily, so we need to have certain security measures in place. The two specific ones that I wanted to talk today about were the uh, the duress code and the authentication code. The and Put this away for now. The uh, the duress code is one where you use a code word to let your people know that you are in fact under duress. Uh, an example of this may be you know you've you've been uh, taken uh, taken hostage criminally, and uh, your phone rings and the, the the your captors want you to answer it so as to play off like everything's okay. Could be your wife calling. So you pick up your phone and you're like, hey honey, what's up? And she's like, hey, you know, you're running really late. With it. What's going on? Oh, no big deal. You know, I'm just here. Well, are you okay? Yeah, 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 everything's smurfy. Now, smurfy could be the trigger word to let her know that something's going on. At this point, she may call the authorities or, or take the appropriate actions. In, in, in the event that you may need further verification that something is going on, you can have a, a follow-up word. You, you know, could she could in turn say, well, how has your day been? And you can turn around and you say, uh, you know, today's been one of those super hectic zany days. The zany being the, the backup confirmation that something bad is going on. So having these codes pre-planned ahead of time would be very, very useful. Uh, an example of this in, in my life was uh, during, the course, uh, during the course of my work as a bail bondsman, I received a phone call from a guy who had been arrested, and the guy uh, tells me, listen, I've been arrested, I'm here as a tourist, please call my grandmother, she can make the financial arrangements. I said, yeah, sure, no problem. And then he tells me, when you speak to her, tell her that I said to tell her cookies. That way she knows she's not being scammed. Obviously, they had worked this out ahead of time in case he got in trouble. Another use of the duress code was during a, an exercise where I was, uh, I was participating as a trainer for uh, uh, several police units in, during a firearms course, a, a, group, a group tactics course. And uh, one of the SWAT teams that was uh, going through the uh, shoot house at the time, I was the bad guy, I took one of the guys hostage, and uh, they used, through, uh, through a dialogue that they had practiced ahead of time, they used the use of the duress word as a way of setting up the, the situation where they were gonna take me out, and they, they did this beautifully. So. This could be used in a number of ways. The rest words are very, very useful. Next, we'll talk about authentication codes. With, with these types of communications, and depending on your circumstances, you may be communicating with people that you may or may not know. Uh, and certainly, if your communication with somebody gets a voice that you're not familiar with, you may want to verify who you're talking to. Think about it this way. Here's a, an interesting scenario. Uh, something happened, and you are headed out to your bug out location. So you call in to make sure the coast is clear, and you get an unusual voice that you're not familiar with. At this point, you turn around and you say, hey, authenticate. This is where this code will come into play. As you'll notice, we have a line going down of letters and a line going across the top of numbers. And where they intersect, you'll have numbers and letters. So I'll yell out, hey, authenticate. And uh, that person will say, I'm ready to authenticate, at which point we'll say, be two which coincides at z so i'll tell him authenticate b2 and he'll in turn tell me z okay at this point i know that the person's a friendly however with these authentication tables it is possible that they may be compromised so in, to avoid uh getting in trouble if we are compromised we've all decided ahead of time that we're going to use the one that's underneath directly underneath the one that it coincides with. In this case, it won't be Z, but it'll be two. So if I say authenticate, and the guy says, yeah, ready to authenticate, and I yell out B2, and he in turn says Z, I will know for sure I've been compromised because the right answer was supposed to be two. Okay. 
So this is one example of an authentication table. You can make these pretty elaborate if you need to. But here you should have a, a good working example of how this stuff is applied. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you find this stuff useful, please go ahead and like and share and help us spread the word. Also, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. This way you'll stay abreast of all our uploads. I'm going to try to keep them coming as often as I can. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'm Tony Torre. This is the Urban Survival Craft Project. And until next time, take care.